I'm not a linguist. They exist, trust me, I'm just not one of them, not even a little. In fact, it took me five years of living in Italy to pretty much learn how to order my favorite pizza at a restaurant. It's called a diavola, by the way, and it is delicious. And nine years living in China to really only learn the following things. Taikwela, which means too expensive. I'm a shopper, so that one came in handy. Fa Piao, which means official invoice. But the reason I remember this one is because that's what I named my cat that I got in China, Fa Piao. <laughs> Fa for short. Ni Hao and Sai Jen, hello and goodbye. And of course, Lianga Bei Pijo, which means two beers, please. So it might come as a surprise to you that my first language is in English. That in fact, I lived, I was born, raised, lived, went to uni, went to school in a country that I was non-English speaking until the age of 23. Being an ambilingual is kind of like having a superpower, being able to use two languages interchangeably. And I understand what a privilege it is to have this superpower that has led me, well, here. So how did this happen for a non-linguist like myself? Growing up, there was equal importance given to both languages that I used. I was never chastised for using one or the other in social or academic situations. I read the most beautiful poetry and literature in English, and also some guilty pleasures. But also, I was surrounded by texts in Spanish that were relevant to me and my identity and my culture. I was able to connect with my peers about all of these things, all of my learning. I was able to connect with them, and I was never told that it was wrong for me to do so in either language. My upbringing in language acquisition was founded on equity. And that's what I'd like to talk to you guys about today, language equity. Language equity is the idea that not one language is more important than the other, or that one has to disappear to make room for the other. It also empowers multilinguals to be true world citizens. But it wasn't until later that I started realizing that there's actually research and science behind my upbringing and its success. Translanguaging is actually the study of language acquisition that says that multilinguals can use their full repertoire of language to be able to tackle academic or social situations and become autonomous in the way that they use language and apply it specifically to different contexts. This is at the heart of language equity. Translanguaging allows for us to build communities based on connection and communication, but also to not discriminate languages. So it values identity, culture, background. But it's not enough to say it's okay for our multilinguals and our English language learners to use their full repertoire of languages. We have to be intentional about it. We have to create opportunities and platforms for them to be able to communicate and interact and learn, approach curriculum and content using all of their language repertoire. No, this little girl is not a linguist. <laughs> But she didn't need to be one. She didn't need to be a linguist. She just needed to be surrounded by advocates for language equity and be bestowed upon a superpower. And little did she know where that would take her. Thank you. <laughs>